Greetings and salutations. In this video, we're going to go ahead and talk a little bit about how we can use RStudio's connection panel to form a connection into the SQLite database. So in order to um, get the most out of this video as possible, please make sure that you've installed R, RStudio, and SQLite's ODBC drivers. Each of these topics has been covered in a previous video. With that being said, let's go ahead and open up RStudio. As you can see, I've already opened up RStudio. To use the connections panel in RStudio, there are two packages that are required. The first package is the ODBC package that handles the open database uh, connective uh, standard that Microsoft released. And then the DBI package, which is a database interface package that is uh, sort of built to facilitate communications um, outside of ODBC with different databases in R. And then the package that's relevant with respect to where we are today, needing to form a, a connection with SQLite is R SQLite. So let's go ahead and run this line of code by pressing Control Enter or Command Enter if you're on a Mac. And as you can see, uh, when we ran that command in the lower left-hand side, all of the packages uh, slowly were being installed. Now, for the next uh, part, we're going to go ahead and download the Le Mans 2016 SQLite database. So the link here that I'll use and link in the description is coatless.github.io forward slash raw dash data forward slash laman 2016.sqlite. So go ahead and press uh, control click. And this is going to open a link and it's going to slowly download here in the lower left hand corner. Uh, basically the SQL database. Once that SQL database is downloaded, um, we're going to need to move it into where our working directory is. So if we use, in this case, get WD, you can see that the working directory is uh, inside of documents. You can also see where the working directory is right over here when it comes to the tilde forward slash. So let's go ahead and very quickly move uh, from our downloads folder, the Le Mans um, uh, 2016 SQLite uh, uh, database that we just acquired into our documents folder. And as you can see, it's now sitting right in our documents folder. So uh, this is just prepping us for a little bit later on in the video. Now, um, let's actually take a moment and switch over to forming a connection with a SQLite uh, database. So here under the connections panel, we're going to go ahead and press the connections. Then what we're going to do is we're going to go down to where you see the SQLite 3 ODBC driver. We'll select that option. And you can see that there's a parameters field. We're going to leave that blank for right now. And we're just gonna go ahead and press okay. When this uh, happens, you'll notice down below uh, that our studio places a connection statement into the SQLite database right into your console. And it's naming this connection con. If we jump over into the environment tab real quick in the top right, we can see that there's a variable under data called con and it's a formal SQLite class. Now, jumping back over into that connections tab, we sort of see that SQLite was loaded and we can sort of see nothing else. That is, there's no tables. So let's go ahead very quickly and uh, write a quick script to check to see the connection is stable by pressing the SQL button. And here you can see that um, RStudio opened up a new uh, SQL script. They've added some custom markup to the top. And in order for uh, the script to use the existing portions, we have to have this uh, basically SQL comment with uh, exclamation mark, preview, and then con with two ends, equivalent to, in this case, the name of the database uh, connection object that we just created, which is COM. Okay. So with that being said, let's go ahead and run our first query, which is going to return the number one. And uh, before we do that, I suppose we need to very quickly name the file. So uh, test SQL connection dot SQL, and then go ahead and press save. 
Now, um, what happened here is the SQL results tab opened, but there hasn't been any output. We just need to make sure that we press preview again. And when we press preview a second time, you can see it's now returning one, which is basically what we're selecting. Now we can switch it to say, hello, SQL world exclamation point. Uh, and then we can go ahead and press preview. And you can see, again, our connection works great. Now, um, the other part that's happening here is we need to uh, very quickly uh, sort of create a table. So if we go over here uh, to this uh, sample script that I'll link in the description, I've set up this table structure for uh, creating a place where we can save contact information. So let's go ahead and press preview, which is now going to run the SQL query. Because this is a creation statement, uh, we shouldn't uh, expect any kind of output. Instead, what we should expect is when we go over to our connections tab and we press refresh connection data, that the uh, table has now being, been created inside of our SQLite database. So here, if we press this uh, sort of arrow pointing towards contacts, what will happen is we can see each of the fields on the left-hand side, so the contact ID, full name, email, and phone, they all correspond to the fields that are present inside of that create table statement. And then on the right-hand side, we can see what the uh, table schema is. So integer, text, so on and so forth. So uh, this just allows us to sort of have a very quick understanding of what's going on uh, within, with a table inside of our database. We can further uh, try and understand a little bit about what's going on by looking at the data. We can see up to 1,000 records by clicking on this sort of data table icon in the far right-hand side of the um, connections pane. When we go ahead and we press that, uh, it'll open up again the connect, uh, contacts table inside of an interactive data viewer, but because we didn't populate the table, no data is really available. So let's jump into the next script, which in this case is demo-table uh, insert. And as you can see, we're sort of inserting into the contacts, uh, contact ID, a full name, an email, and a phone number. So let's go again uh, to where you see preview, and we're going to go ahead and press preview. And you can see that, again, the SQL results query ran. Um, it just didn't, again, update um, or show us any kind of output because this is sort of a population statement. So we're just adding data into SQL uh, instead of trying to query for it. If we go to where um, we see this data table icon again, and we select the data table icon, you can now see uh, our database uh, table has entries uh, for different contacts. So the contact ID one, two, three, along with a, a name, a phone number, and some kind of email address. So let's go ahead and close out of that contacts one more time. So with that said, again, we've sort of uh, created this quick connection into a SQL light database. Uh, however, this quick connection into the database is only going to be uh, able to persist through uh, you know, um, our current session, which means that if we go to where you see this disconnect button and we select the disconnect and then we press yes, uh, what will happen is the entire SQLite um, table will be removed completely. And we can see that this is the case uh, by going back to that connect statement uh, in the top right and then pressing R console which is going to take our previous connection string and then run it in, our, in the console. And we can see on the far right-hand side, we have no tables, whereas before we had a contact table that was populated with three entries. Even if we press refresh data connection, again, nothing will happen because the table that we had was not geared to persist across time because it was in memory only. Now, if we press uh, disconnect again and we say yes, and then we go and we uh, sort of remove the connection from the connection history, we can go and uh, select a new connection uh, again. We can go back to where we see this ODBC driver option, and then we can specify a parameter, in this case, database, and we're going to say that that's going to be equal to mycontacts-db.sqlite. 
And if we go right down below, again, notice that it's added into this connection statement, sort of this file backed option. So if we go and press OK, what will end up happening is uh, our studio will create a connection into this file backed database called mycontacts-db.sqlite. And uh, what we can do is we can go back and we can rerun our previous scripts because they're all using that same con um, uh, uh, connection object name. Uh, we don't have to change anything. So if we go ahead and press preview, right? What this has done again is it's uh, taken that contacts table definition and it's now added it into our uh, contacts-db.sqlite. And then we can go ahead um, and check that uh, is indeed the case by looking at the view table. The next part that we can uh, perform is we can populate the table by going back to that table insert and we can go ahead and press preview. And then if we go ahead and say uh, refresh uh, connection data and then uh, we select again that view table statement, you should now see again the uh, contacts table being populated. So if we click off on the contacts uh, interactive data viewer that was opened and we now press this connection disconnect option and we say yes, uh, we're sure that we want to connect. Um, what we can then do is we can uh, go back and then reconnect to the same sort of file back database. And when we go ahead and re we reconnect, we see immediately that context is present. And not only that, we can also see here that our data um, actually remained after we disconnected uh, from the SQLite uh, instance. So the file backed uh, SQLite version uh, allowed us to very easily acquire um, data uh, and save it for the long term compared to the in-memory version, which allowed us to just sort of experiment a little bit. Uh, and then the second we disconnected, all of our changes also disconnect or also disappear. So um, with that said, uh, let's go ahead and press the back arrow. So this little blue button um, and this is going to sort of uh, allow us to go one back uh, to see all of the different possible connections. So right now you can see that my contacts-db.sqlite uh, is connected. We're going to want to very quickly disconnect by pressing that disconnect button and saying yes. And then we're going to want to go back to viewing all connections. Then what we're going to do next is we're going to actually connect into that Laman data set that we downloaded. So we can say new connection and we can go down to where we see that ODBC driver again. Inside of the parameters option, we can say database equals Laman 2016.sqlite and we can go ahead and press OK. And you can see that when we press OK, the far right hand side um, of the connection menu gets populated inside of our studio with all of the different uh, Laman um, uh, database tables. So we can see the all stars full. And if we go ahead and we press view um, uh, the table, uh, and we have a thousand records uh, across eight different columns. And we can just sort of look around and see what's going on inside of our data. So that said, um, if we again go back by pressing that blue arrow to view all connections, we can see that we've managed to load two different uh, databases. One database that was not our own, which is the Laman one that we downloaded. And then another database that we created um, uh, all by ourselves and then populated. So I hope this video helped and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye now.